James DeGale versus Marco Antonio Paraban. This is a stay busy fight for DeGale. That's what it's intended to be. But it's a pretty damn tough choice for a stay busy fight. Normally a guy who has a guaranteed world title shot like James DeGale does because he's the mandatory challenger for the IBF. Normally a guy in that position would take an eight rounder or a 10 rounder against a journeyman just to stay busy, just to stay active, just to stay sharp. But instead, he's taken on a former world title challenger in Marco Antonio Paraban, who's a very, very tough guy who went, te- went 12 tough rounds with Saki Obika in a very, very close fight that a lot of people actually felt that Paraban won. Paraban could have become the WBC world super middleweight champion in that fight. And a lot of people maybe believe he should have been. So this is, like I say, for a, a stay busy fight, this is a very tough fight for DeGale to choose. You have to give DeGale a lot of credit. I know he's not the most likable character, but as a fighter, you can't say that DeGale's a ducker. You can't say that DeGale doesn't want to fight the best because he does. There's an interview on IFL TV, I think it's IFL TV or it might be secondsout.com, one of the two. The interview came out today and it's with Ambrose Mendy, who's James DeGale's business manager. And he claims, and he says he has evidence to back this up, that about a year ago, when Andre Ward fought Delvin Rodriguez, is it, is it Delvin Rodriguez? No, Edwin, sorry, Edwin Rodriguez. <laughs> Delvin Rodriguez is another guy, Edwin Rodriguez. When he fought Edwin Rodriguez, uh, just a few weeks prior to that fight, they nearly had James DeGale fight in Andre Ward. That fight was nearly done. They apparently had an agreement with Andre Wood's people, but then just a few weeks away or a couple months away, Wood's people decided to uh, forget about the Gale and instead fight Edward Rodriguez. I'm not exactly sure why. Maybe it was because it was easier to sell Rodriguez in the States. I don't know. But the Gale was willing to fight the very, very best. Remember, uh, Andre Wood is a guy that even Carl Frutch, the warrior Carl Frutch doesn't want to fight again. But yeah, James DeGale's willing to step in there with him. Rather than go for one of the easier champions, DeGale was like, fuck it, let me go and fight Ward. You can't accuse James DeGale of being a ducker or a pussy or anything like that. The guy's going for the best opponents possible, even in his little stay busy fights. You know, so Paraban is going to come hungry. He's going to be determined. He's a pressure fighter. He's a Mexican. He's very, very tough. And it's going to be hard for James DeGale to look good in this fight, I think. I think it's going to be very hard. If he looks good in this fight, then wow. It's going to put serious pressure on Carl Frutch to fight James DeGale. So we'll see what happens. As far as I'm concerned, at the top level in boxing, it's about styles as much as anything. And people might find this, uh, you know, a shocking thing to say, but I think that Paraban might even be a more difficult style for James DeGale than Carl Frutch. I'm not saying that he beats Carl Froch easily or anything like that, not at all. But Paraban's the guy who keeps his hands up when he comes forward. He doesn't give you as much opportunity to land counters as a guy like Carl Froch who fights with his hands down and he's not particularly quick in the hand speed department. And, and James DeGale, as I've mentioned before, has very long arms just like Froch, so he won't struggle to land from long range. So I just think Froch stylistically gives DeGale more opportunities to land than someone like Paraban does, who's going to come in behind a tight guard and apply a lot of pressure. It's, to me, it's a bad style matchup for James DeGale, and I'll be impressed if he looks impressive in this fight. And like I say, a lot of kudos to him for taking such a tough fight in the interim. Maybe it's a foolish thing to do. Maybe it's foolish. I guess we'll find out on fight night. Drop your comments below. What do you feel about this Paraban fight? Do you anticipate the girl winning? And if so, in what method, by what method? And if you anticipate Paraban winning, then you know, give me a breakdown in your comments below and let me know exactly how you see it panning out. This is Hatman, I'm out.